now that things are finally starting to open back up, I can take you to my second hometown zoo. And there's no better way to do that than with the Lincoln Park Zoo, Center for African Apes. The zoo had been known for their success in breeding gorillas and researching great apes. In 1976, the zoo had just completed their former great ape house. Nearly 25 years later, in 2004, the zoo used roughly $26 million to build a sanctuary four times larger than their previous one that through time became one of the country's better homes for these African apes. So we begin outside of the outdated primate house overlooking a lush moated yard known as the Gorilla Bamboo Forest. The viewing stretches all the way down to a large viewing shelter where you can get up close with these apes. But when the apes choose to escape the Chicago climate, they can venture into the Center for African Apes. This large 29,000 square foot facility is two stories tall and features three large indoor day rooms dedicated to these apes, the first of which connects to the outdoor exhibit that we just saw. On this day, this space was occupying the zoo's bachelor troop of gorillas. These four males average from ages 17 to 14 and were all born at different facilities. Once juveniles mature, they become known as black bats, meaning they are no longer juveniles but they are too young to become silverbacks. Normally in the wild, around the age of eight, these young males leave or are kicked out of their family groups. Oftentimes, these gorillas then form groups with other blackbacks, thus creating a bachelor group. The center continues to the Lester E. Fisher Center for Study and Conservation. Lester E. Fisher was a notable zoologist who began working at the Lincoln Park Zoo in 1947, studying great apes and eventually became the zoo's first veterinarian. The second of the two indoor day rooms is also a sizable space that connects to an outdoor exhibit known as the Straggler Fig Forest. It includes artificial straggler figs and many climbing opportunities for the apes. Today it housed the zoo's family troop of western lowland gorillas and now may be a good time to tell you that all the apes living in this facility can be rotated throughout these exhibits. Family troops are made up of normally 5 to 10 gorillas, including females, their offspring, and a silverback. As you can see with Kawan here, the silverback has a very characteristic patch of silver hair on his back that comes with maturity. He is in charge of making the troops decisions and protecting the females and his offspring. Now one thing that benefits both zoo visitors and the zoo's population is breeding. Over the years, eight of the zoo's 13 gorillas have been born here at the Lincoln Park Zoo. The youngest of the bunch are the two-year-old infants Mondika and Tajiki. These males were born one month apart, and as they would normally do in the wild, young gorillas tend to play with one another, often wrestling. 
climbing, and chasing each other. And of course, if you'd like to know a bit more about the apes living at this establishment, you can find that in the description. Anyways, directly behind this is the third and final rotational day room. On its right side, children can get up close and personal with the apes through a simulating log. Although like the others, the view continues down the full length of the exhibit. Its inhabitants also have access to yet another outdoor yard known as the Dry Riverbed Valley, which includes water features and plenty of space for what on this day was the zoo's chimpanzees. The zoo is currently home to 12 chimpanzees, seven of which live in a public group and the remaining five live off exhibit. The chimpanzee is one of the most closely related animals to humans. They share about 98.8 .8 of our DNA. Wild chimps live in groups of about 20 to 150 members, including both males and females. These groups are known as communities. In these communities, different chimps are organized to do tasks like hunting or caring for the young. Chimpanzees are omnivores. In the wild, they can feed on fruits, plants, insects, and even in some cases, small monkeys. When this groundbreaking complex opened, it opened not only to provide quality homes for these animals, but to educate visitors about them. Over the years, many research studies have been conducted on these apes here at the zoo, and through time, it eventually became one of the greatest ape complexes in the country. Thank you for watching.